Get ready to experience the explosion. You're tuned to the Indiana Blast TV Network. From Coach Stadium in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Blast TV Network presents USISL Soccer as this afternoon, the Indiana Blast hosts the Rockford Raptors. Today's game is brought to you by Soccer Unlimited. We cover the entire field. By Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. And by Kroger. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Coon Stadium on a beautiful day. I'm Ken Tomash, along with my color partner, Dan Capsalis. And Dan, two games in the books for the Blast, no goals yet. To say that today is a must win would be understating it quite a bit, I think. Well, without any question, they're looking to get, break the ice, get in the mode where they can get a little bit of an offensive attack on. And this is a big game for them because they have not scored a goal yet, obviously not even had a victory. So it's a very important game for them today. And not only is it a D3 Pro League match, it's very important there as one of the 16 that will count towards the playoffs. It's also a U.S. Open Cup qualifier. If the Blast are one of the best teams in these four regular season games that count as cup games, they can move on to the second round of the oldest soccer competition in the United States. Right now, let's go down to the field where Chris Baker is standing by with Mark Phillips of the Blast for more on today's game. Bake. I'm here with Mark Phillips of the Blast. Uh, he's a midfielder. Uh, Mark, tough time scoring uh, the first two games. Um, anything, any changes uh, Jimmy's going to make uh, to try and enhance that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the first two games we we're trying to sort ourselves out. New team, new guys. Um, we haven't played together. I think uh, now we're a little more comfortable with each other. We can get an attack forward a lot more. Um, Cleveland, we showed that. Actually, we were a bit unlucky in Cleveland. Should have came with the result, but we didn't. Um, we had tons of opportunities. Actually hit a post or two. And uh, actually the inside of a post on one of them. So it's not that we aren't uh, getting, the, getting the chances, just we aren't taking the chances. So. Any uh, uh, changes to your game uh, since the season started that you're looking to improve upon? Um, a little bit. Uh, I've never played uh, actually out wide left. I've played out wide le uh, on the right, um, so that's a bit different for me. Um, you know, improving. You know, that's a, it's a completely different aspect on the left uh, since I'm right-footed. Just getting up and down the line and being direct is what Jimmy wants me to do, and that's what I'm known for is my speed and, and everything else. So if I just keep doing that, I think good things will happen. All right, Mark Phillips. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Langemann's Deli and Bagels is a great place for a fast meal that isn't fast food. We have 16 types of bagels baked from scratch daily from family recipes. Get your day going with a bagel and your favorite gourmet coffee. Or drop in for a delicious deli sandwich for lunch. Langemann's can even help with your party or corporate gathering with our box lunches, deli trays, party trays, and our party bagel hero. With three convenient Indianapolis locations, Langemann's Deli and Bagels. Welcome back to Coon Stadium, everybody. Ken Tomash, Dan Capsalis with you. Today, the Blast taking on the Rockford Raptors. A little breezy here at Coon Stadium today. And maybe the winds of change will bring a victory for the Blast. Time now for our Keys to the Game segment. And, Coach, what does each team need to do to win today? Well, obviously, for Rockford, these guys have to stay a little focused. They have two game, two weeks off, and they have, they're going to be a little bit fresh. So they got to stay a little focused and not get complacent here. They've got two victories. And the Blast haven't won a game, obviously, so they got to be comfortable with where they're at and not take the take this game for granted. Also, the organization in the back for the Raptors is key. They've got um, several goals given up in the last couple of games, and the organization in the back is going to be a big factor. The Blast now, they've got to create some scoring opportunities. They have yet to even score a goal. The attack is huge. The support in the midfield and the organization in the midfield and the composure in the midfield is good, has to be good. And Ginsburg, Craig Ginsburg is out today. Uh, one of their offensive thrusts and one of their – at least attacking style players has gone today, so they're going to need somebody else to step it up today. Maybe that someone will be Mark Phillips, who we talked with just a moment ago in the pregame show. Now we'll go down to Chris Baker once again, who's with Roland Hahn, the head coach of the Raptors. Baker. Coach, uh, 
you had two tough games down in Texas, and we spoke a little bit earlier, down 3-0 to Houston, uh, come back, win 4-3 in overtime. Um, now you've had two weeks off. How, uh, how has that affected your team? Well, hopefully it won't be too much of a factor. We had two weeks of solid training sessions. And I think what we learned from our two games in Texas is that we do have the resolve and, and the uh, mental toughness to come from, from behind and score some goals and get back into the match. So hopefully today we'll come out ready right from the beginning. What are you expecting from the, uh, the blast? Well, I don't know a lot about them, but I'm sure they're going to be technically sound and, and they look like they're a big side, so I'm sure they'll be strong in the air. But we expect a very tough game today. The Central Division, I think, is very tough, and there are no easy games in this league. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Langemans Deli and Bagels is a great place for a fast meal that isn't fast food. We have 16 types of bagels baked from scratch daily from Family Recipes. Get your day going with a bagel and your favorite gourmet coffee. Or drop in for a delicious deli sandwich for lunch. Langemans can even help with your party or corporate gathering with our box lunches, deli trays, party trays, and our party bagel hero. With three convenient Indianapolis locations, Langemans Deli and Bagel. And here's George Crawford. Here along the near side to Mark Phillips, who's the acting captain today with Craig Ginsburg being out. We talked about it in the pregame show that Craig Ginsburg strained a hamstring in that loss at Cleveland on Friday night, that 1-0 loss, and so having Ginsburg not in the lineup tonight, a, a big loss for the Blast. Dan, uh, what do they need to do to make up for Guinea's speed? Well, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to move the ball from, from side uh, field to field. They're going to have to switch, uh, switch the attack a little bit and and not rely so much on with, the, with losing Gin, Guinea's speed. They're going to have to just play the ball to feed and get a little, some guys more involved in the attack. That one went, in, went off Kofi D'Souza of the Rockford Raptors, and here is Russell G. Moving out of the back, the former English player and former Minnesota Thunder player gets it up long up to Izang Jacob, who's starting up front today. He came in as a substitute in our first game, and now Freddie King chases the ball. He goes after Alistair Steele, who was a very good all Big Ten player at the University of Wisconsin. He and Scott Lamphere played together on the Badgers 1995 NCAA title team. Here's Shane Schmidt, also has Wisconsin ties. He's from outside Milwaukee in Cedars, Cedarburg, Wisconsin. And here's Alan Alderson along the near side touchline. Across midfield, and Alderson will try to put it up ahead to King. Now Jacob with it, and Scott Lamphere. Lamphere puts it off Isaac Jacob and out of play here along the near touchline. It'll be a throw in for Rockford. See Coach McDonald changing things up here in the attack, going with Isaac Jacob and Freddie King. Last home opener was Yusanovich and Gusto, so obviously Jimmy trying to get some different thrust and trying to get the blast uh, into the back of the net for the first time. Let's see how they do. The thing they need to do, I think, is not press. I mean, that first goal, let it come, because I think if they try too hard, it could backfire on them. Here comes Rockford. It's D'Souza chasing it down, and Alderson sprawls to the turf and leaves D'Souza alone. He'll chip it across, head it in for a goal. Just two and a half minutes in, D'Souza sets up. Couldn't see who scored that, Dan. It's hard to tell from up here. Yeah, it looked like Verning. It's a beautiful, beautiful near post run. We'll see it on the replay here. Serve the ball from the outside. Well, Mike Verning. Mike Verning, no surprise, uh, he has scored three goals now this season. He's their leading scorer, 23-year-old from Western Illinois. Had a good year last year as a rookie, and he's off to a great start this year. That's his third goal in as many games. So in the third minute, D'Souza to Mike Verning, and it's 1-0 Rockford. Verning made a great near post run. They serve it up from the outside. That's what the Blasts have to do. The idea is to get the ball outside, serve it into the box, have guys making the runs. He made a beautiful near post run, beat Crawford to the head, and just knocked it into the side panel. Beautiful goal. What also made it happen is that Alan Alderson slipped and tripped and fell in the grass. The little grass gremlins got him, and that's what left D'Souza wide open to make that chip. And now here's Mark Phillips. Strips the ball from his man, and now it's a foot race. There's a guy that has to get, you talk about what do they do without Ginsburg. Mark Phillips has to get more involved in the game. They have to get him more involved in the game, get the ball to his feet. He's, 
He's an excellent midfielder, and they need his quickness and speed and size on the outside. So the key for, for the blast in midfield without Ginsburg is to get Phillips a lot more involved. Here's Jacob trying to shield the ball with his body from those two defenders. And it goes off, he's saying, and it'll be a goal kick for the Raptors. Now here's Brad Howder. This is his first game in the Nets, as Dave Walther had played every minute of the first two games. And a bit of a homecoming for him. Maybe that's why he's getting the start today, yeah. because he uh, went to Park Tudor High right here in Indianapolis and played at DePaul over in Greencastle. Played at DePaul for Page, a good good old buddy of mine. I, I, I didn't realize that he was still playing. I thought he was. I thought it was getting way up there in years. Apparently not. He'll shoot me for saying that. But uh, no, it's nice to see Brad on the field again. Dan, he's only 30. I know he is. <laughs> <laughs> now here's Russell G. I scored a lot of goals on Brad, so I can I can tease him a little I'm bit. I'm sure he'll <laughs> tell us about every one of them. <laughs> We're five minutes into the first half of play at Coon Stadium. Ken Tomash, Dan Capsalis with you on the Blast TV Network, and the Rockford Raptors have taken a 1-0 lead and. Now that first goal in franchise history becomes even bigger because you need it now just to get equal. The longer they go without scoring their first goal, the, the more pressure they're going to feel. So the, the key right now is just let them relax, get the ball on the ground. They're down one goal, but this is a long, long game. They've got lots of time. Chipped into the box again, but headed out of there by Allen Alderson. And now a loose ball in the box, and Milovats comes up to get it on one bounce. This field here at Coon Stadium is, is so wide, too. The Blasts have to utilize the width of the, of the field and really switch the point of attack. If they do that well and play the ball to feet, they'll get into some opportunities and create some opportunities for themselves offensively. If they go to play it long, uh, Rockford's going to have, a, have a, a very easily defensive time with these guys today. Now here's Josh Provan. We saw his brother Jake playing for the Milwaukee Rampage. Provan also an outstanding player in his own right, All-American at Wisconsin. Pretty smart guy, too. He's going to get his degree this year from Wisconsin in microbiology and immunology. I've known some players who can't even spell either of those words. <laughs> some broadcasters, too. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome all of our stations along the Blast TV network line, including Wave TV Channel 53 in Indianapolis, Comcast Channel 13 in Indianapolis, Inside Cable Channel 19 in Fishers and Noblesville, and Time Warner Cable Channel 6 in Carmel. Hope to be adding even more stations along the line so you can enjoy blast soccer all summer long. We're just a reminder, this segment of today's game brought to you without interruption by Soccer Unlimited. We cover the entire field. This one will skip back into the area, but Alan Alderson gets there and waves Mili Milovats off. Alderson started on the back line today along with George Crawford and Russell G. And Randy Whiteford, the rookie from IUPUI, gets his first start. And this is Whiteford on the far side. Shane Schmidt is at midfield along with Lauren Crawford, Mark Phillips, and Ken Tometsko. And Freddie King and Isang Jacob are the starters up front for Jimmy McDonald. He's got to be feeling a little pressure too on Jimmy. Still looking for his first win as a pro head coach until you get that first one. You're always just waiting and waiting. Got to be, got to be tough on everybody concerned. Jimmy will keep his composure, but he's he's definitely, he definitely wants to get that first goal. And just it just breaks the ice for these guys. Let them relax a little bit and, and get over it. They put too much pressure on themselves. They're gonna they're gonna make mental mistakes, and it's gonna be a lot longer before they'll score. So hopefully they'll just relax, get their composure, play the ball of feet, and get some opportunities here. George Crawford goes down in a heap there, along with. Jake Trudy, they'll call the foul on Trudy. And so free kick upcoming for the blast. Alderson will put it into the area. Shane Schmidt just outside the box, but Alistair Steele taps it up ahead to Amarildo Oliveira. Taken right back the other way by Lauren Crawford. Chips it up ahead for Jacob, just outside the box. That was the first time the Blast really ventured into Raptors territory. And now here's Freddie King. Has it taken away from him by Alex Umansky.
And now it's Provan at midfield. You see the time. We're under 36 minutes to play in the first half and Rockford holding a 1-0 lead. Milovats will send this one long. And Lamphere outleaped Isang Jacob for that one. And back comes Oliveira for Rockford. Near side Verning who scored the Rockford goal to Alistair Steele. Young man originally born in England, but he grew up in Norway. Well, and that felt good. Milovac pounces on that one. I wasn't going to tell anybody, but the broadcast position here, the perch is a little precarious, and Dan leaned back just a little bit too far, and I'll have to have the trainer check him out. I've had roller coaster rides better than that. This one will go out over on the far side. Don't forget, you can check out the latest on the blast on the internet. Find out results, stats, photos, the latest on Dan Capsalis' injury and the <laughs> fall from grace. It's all at <laughs> www.indianablast.com. Good day for soccer and some fans enjoying it. A little breezy, but couldn't have asked for more sunshine. Or well, we could ask to be in the sunshine. <laughs> We'll work on that. Maybe we'll, like Harry Carey, we'll do a game from the bleachers. Try to get Freddie King up front, but Provan was there first for Rockford, and now we'll go over to Lamphere on the far side. Lamphere was a second-round pick of the Metro Stars in the very first MLS draft, the 11th player taken overall, and was with the Metro Stars last spring and then this spring, this spring as they took a tour of Europe, but sent, sent back down and playing for Rockford for the second straight year. And this is Lamphere far side, pressured by Lauren Crawford, but they knock it back into the Rockford end. We're some 11 minutes into the first half, and Rockford already has a 1-0 lead on a third minute goal by Mike Verning. And now looking for more into the area, but that one went off Jason Akers, who was her team captain and leading scorer a year ago. And so it'll be Milovats with a goal kick. This is the start of a three-game homestand for the Blast. They will also be home Friday night. The next match for the Blast is Friday night at 7.30 against the Premier League's Cincinnati Riverhawks. A brand new team this season. They'll be making the journey on I-74. King sent that one a little bit too far, and Howder with his first real task of the afternoon to scoop it up and start the Rockford attack. That's the type of a ball that's, that's not gonna work. They can't put the ball through in the ground in the middle like that. That either has to go to feet inside the box or it has to go outside so they can serve it in. A ball like that, Brent Hodders is going to have a field day back there. Steele sent that one long, but too long, and DeSouza can't get there. Milovats will distribute here along the near side to Alan Alderson. George Crawford gave that one up, but Alistair Steele kicked it across the touchline. You got a set of tools here, Ken? And Alderson will throw it in. I'm going to bolt my chair down to this. Let's just make sure we don't, uh, don't lean back too far. Get as close as you can. No, when, it, when it rains, it pours. Either you can't score or you, your broadcast partner <laughs> leans back too far and almost gets killed. <laughs> There's Alderson showing a little bit of aggressiveness, a little bit too much as he dragged Oliveira down, and he's flagged for it. He'll... Alan Alderson from Vancouver area, Surrey, British Columbia. A graduate of Trinity Western, played the last couple years with athletes in action before he came here. Here's Josh Provan. Far side, Lamphere. Akers, nice little one touch with a head. They'll chip this one into the box, but D'Souza trying ahead. Loose ball in front. Akers, left footed shot, but it's blocked by the defense. Good move there by Russell G to block that one. They send it across the touch line. And with 31 30 to go in the first half, it'll be a throw in for Rockford. They're up quickly with it. And it's Akers, who celebrated his 26th birthday just this past Wednesday. Comes here to Provan, chip it up into the area. Went over George Crawford's hands, a shot and a save by Mile Milovats. Nice effort there by Mile, but 
Lamphere tries one from out there. Now it's Mike Verning who scored the first goal. And that one goes off G again and over the fence on the far side. Rockford's really doing a nice job switching the point of attack. They're, as you can see, they're serving the ball into the box and they're competing for it very well and they're getting some great opportunities. Melee came up big there, otherwise this game's 2 nothing right now. Organization with the blast and defense has to get a little bit better. They seem to be missing their marks, especially in the far post runs. He's got to communicate a little bit better. If they're not communicating well or what it is, but Jimmy McDonald is not, not too happy at this point. Milovats will take the goal kick, send it long. It's picked off by Jake Trudy, and now foul on Shane Schmidt at midfield as Akers goes down. And Lamphere sends it far side. We're 15 minutes into the first half, and this segment of today's game brought to you without interruption by Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. Here's Josh Provan again, been very active at the back. Coming forward, he dances around Randy Whiteford. Still with it, making a long run here off to the side to Jake Trudy. Trudy will chip it into the box. D'Souza tried the header, but just he's about two inches too short to get that one, and Shane Schmidt has it on the far side. Seems to be a lot more energy on the Rockford side, Dan, as they just seem to be going after balls, winning 50-50 balls, and going after the loose ones. We talked about it in the pregame show. They haven't had a game in two weeks, which allows them to be a little fresh. And, and if they've had anybody who's had some injuries, they've, that gives them time to, to, to heal up a little bit and stay fresh. So, you know, sometimes it could be an advantage and sometimes it could be a disadvantage if you if you're haven't played a game in two weeks. Right now, it looks like it's working to uh, the Rockford's advantage. They're definitely in control of this game. Russell G headed that one across the end line, and so it'll be the first corner kick of the afternoon. Here's the corner kick, and that one got caught way up in the wind. Look at that baby sail and headed right to Milovats. Let's go down to Chris Baker has something on the sidelines. Bake. The blast moved to Randy Whitford out to left midfield from the back, and uh, Mark Phillips into the center uh, midfield position to try and boost up the, uh, the midfield. They seem to be losing possession and don't have a defensive presence, and uh, uh, Rockford's uh, just getting through them. So they made that tactical change and uh, hope for some improvement there. Ken? All right, Bake, thanks. Russell G sends that one up ahead. It's Lauren Crawford far side, playing alongside his brother George once again today. This is Josh Provan tracking down that one. Kind of tricky to play balls high in this win today though, Dan, because you saw in that corner kick as that one hung up there and came back the other way. It is a strong wind. You definitely have, definitely have to keep it as low as you can. Obviously the ball's gonna go in the air and it's gonna happen throughout the entire game. The, the team that can control it with the Keeping the ball as low and on the ground as you can is a team that's going to maintain better possession. It's tough. With the wind, it is tough. And then the ball changed like a golf ball in mid-flight. It's going to change direction a little bit. And it's tough to judge when it's coming down. So they do need to keep it keep it low. You see that corner kick that the wind just held it right up and also allows the, long, the longer the ball's in the air, it allows the defense time to organize themselves while they're waiting for it to come on down. So it's, the quicker you can play the ball on the ground and, and transition, this – Oh. This is the key with with this type of a wind condition. And I like what Jimmy McDonald's done here. He's put, you know, what Chris was saying, he's put Mark Phillips in the middle of the field. I was saying earlier, they got to get this guy a little bit more involved, a little more active in the, in the in this game and get an offensive thrust going. So by having him in the middle, you know, maybe they'll utilize him a little bit more and see if he can generate some kind of a scoring opportunity and attack and getting the ball to Freddie King or Eason Jacob. Well, Russell G will send it long. Nobody home. And Rockford back the other way. Quickly, Lauren Crawford in there to sneak that one away. <laughs> Caught his man napping. And here's Crawford on the run, and Howder has to come way out to the top of the area and dive to make that one. If he thought he was going to have an easy first half, by the way, the first 19 minutes or so had gone, he had to break a sweat there. Not bad for an old guy, huh, Dan? Not bad. Not bad at <laughs> all. You're talking to a guy who just 30, turned 32 the other day. 30 year old here's D'Souza again, assisted on the first goal, and that one. He tried to cross it, and Russell G stepped in front of his man and knocked it across the end line for yet another corner kick for Rockford. One thing that, that Brad Hodder, I even remember him in high school, he, the, the one thing that a goalkeeper has to do is, is you have to be mobile inside the box and, and intercept plays. We saw it last week with Carmen Isako. Came out of the box and, and interu interrupted the play and, and, and 
stole the ball on a number of occasions in the attack, and Brad does that very well. He, he anticipates the play well, and he's very active in the box, and it's going to be tough for the Blast to get a ball on a through ball into the box and, and a scoring opportunity. Again, they've got to get the ball outside and serve it up and try to isolate him on his line and put something on goal. Well, Lamphere tried to chip that one across, and a loose ball in front picked up by Milovac, so neither of Rockford's corner kicks have been successful. Milovac may have gotten that one caught up in the wind as well. It went over there to the far side. And now it's Lamphere, far side at midfield. Up ahead, trying to hit it to Mark Schlenker. Rockford still controlling in the blast end. D'Souza with a nice little one-touch move, trying to get away from Randy Whiteford, and Whiteford takes it away from him, gets it to Alan Alderson here along the near side. Taken right back the other way by Jake Trudy. And now here's Alistair Steele. We've played just more than 20 minutes in this game, and it's 1-0 Rockford on a goal three minutes in. George Crawford will clear that one. It looks, Dan, like we're, Jimmy McDonald's going to make his first substitution of the match, and looks like we're going to getting ready to see Matt Gosto come in, and we'll see for whom, and we'll that that'll probably tell us exactly what he's trying to get accomplished as Gosto is signaling to come in, but I can't see for who he's going to come in for. What Rockford is doing very well, and I think what Jimmy's doing here, he's going to change his attack a little bit, or change one of the players in the attack. The outside wing backs for Rockford are attacking and they're going into the, the midfield area completely unmarked and then they're serving the balls wide and serving them across completely unchallenged. So the attack from the back that the Raptors are, are, are showing, the wing backs going through, the offensive players have to track those guys back. Otherwise they're in, they're in very easily and very simply and they're serving balls up and that's why you see the Raptors dominating the game in the box and getting more scoring opportunities and they're utilizing it real well. Blasts have to do a better job tracking the players out of the back coming in the, into the midfield. They're not doing that very well right now at all, and I think Jimmy's going to try to switch something up here. All right, here's Akers, far side. Sends it long. Schlenker on left wing, but that one may have gone just a little bit too far, and now we will see Gosto come in. So Gosto will come in, and we believe he's going to replace Freddie King. Gusto, one of the first players signed by the Blast. He's played over in Europe the last couple of years. I think I need to get the trainer up here. Get a shot of that nice little bruise on Dan's elbow. And Freddie King is coming out. Freddie King, who didn't play in the opener and then started up top on Friday night in the 1-0 loss to Cleveland. Now he will leave in the... 23rd minute. I think as the game goes on and, and the scoring opportunities don't come about for the Blast, you're going to see Coach McDonald making making some more changes in midfield and in the attack. He's trying to get some fresh legs. He wants somebody to take charge, get involved in his game, be a leader out there, and and, and, and try to develop some kind of a, of a of a rhythm into the attacking mode. The defensively is there, you know, they have a lot of pressure on them so far the, the, the first part of this game and the attacking players have to get an opportunity to, to relieve some of that pressure. It's just a matter of time if, if, if Rockford continues to amount the attack they've amounted, then the Blast eventually are going to break down and make a mental mistake and, and like we saw in, in the first goal. So they, he has to try to continue to keep, keep fresh legs in the game and, and get these guys more involved and if something doesn't happen, I think we're going to see more changes from the bench. He's looking for a leader. Well, Shane Schmidt gave De Oliveira a shove in the back. Oliveira went down. And they award the free kick to the blast. Go figure that one. Randy Whiteford sends it long, and now here's Gosto just into the game at midfield. He came in for Freddie King in the 23rd minute. Over to Shane Schmidt. And Schmidt got kicked in the face. Looked by Jason Akers as Akers 
Schmidt was waiting for that ball to come up, and Akers came up high with the boot, and I believe he kicked Shane Schmidt right in the face. Accidentally, of course, but I believe Shane went down and grabbed his grabbed his face, and if they lose Shane Schmidt as well, who is an excellent stopper on that back line, that would be a big loss for the Blast, who already are playing without Craig Ginsburg today. Tough to see from this angle. The, the, I saw it as it happened. He did so. hit the ball, but he might have clipped him in the face at the same time. He came in cleats up about hip high and used the bottom of his foot to kind of strike the ball away, and, and Shane was just right there trying to receive the ball with his head. He didn't hit him solid. I mean, he did, he did hit the ball because the ball obviously changed direction. But it looks like he might have clipped him in the face. Or and you know it's serious because the referee has stopped the game clock, which rarely occurs in this league. It's only for a matter of serious injury. Schmidt is up. We don't see any blood, but he did uh, did grab his head immediately. Seems to be okay. Looks that like he's all right. We'll be back and we'll be playing. But that this would make a, a tough... Uh, Tough few weeks on Shane in that opener, the exhibition opener down at IU. He needed a, like three staples to close a gash in the top of his head when he collided with an IU player. So he's an aggressive style guy who's used to used to mixing it up and, and getting into crowds and, and 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 a very physical player. And when when you're when you're that kind of a style, uh, he's going to dish out injuries he's, and he's going to receive a few. So I'm sure he's used to it. Uh, he lost that ball just outside the Rockford area. Cleat in the face, though, is not something that will make your day. No. That's not good. Well, you and he can compare war wounds after <laughs> today's game is over. <laughs> All you did was lean back, though. <laughs> yeah, but it was about a 10-foot drop yeah, for it's crying not, out loud. Not good. We'll work on that. Lauren Crawford at midfield looking for help. Sends it through to Mark Phillips. Here's Phillips who's really got to get loose. He's got Alistair Steele on him. Phillips probably the perhaps the most talented player on this team. Hasn't really had much of a chance to get loose and show what he can do. He's got experience playing overseas, played in England in the Unibond League for the Boston Pilgrims. And played for the last couple years for the Ohio and Columbus Zogs of the USISL, but that team went belly up. And so he and Eric Nichols happy to make that three hour drive over here a couple times a week to train and for games. He's a good one. Now here's Josh Provan near side. Randy Whiteford comes up to mark him. Trudy near side right along the touchline. And now a little more of a spring in the step. Shown by the blast. But still, Rockford has dominated the first 25 minutes or so of this game. Through ball for Akers, but a little bit too far, and it'll skip right to Milovats. The Blaster allowing Rockford right now to have have control of the midfield and give them time. What what they need to do a little bit better from the standpoint of an attack is when they have the ball, when the Blasts have the ball in the Raptors' defensive zone, they need to apply a little pressure, not let them out so easily. As you see here, this guy's got a lot of room, he's got a lot of space, and he's going to be bringing the ball out. If they can apply pressure in the defensive zone and, and force them to make, make me some quick mistakes, it's a good opportunity for them to recover the ball and maybe get into a transition and do a, into a scoring opportunity. See, just more than 18 minutes to go in the first half of play from Coons Stadium in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ken Tomash, Dan Capsalis with you on the Blast TV Network. Chris Baker on the sidelines. Our next broadcast will be on Monday, May the 12th as the Blast take on the Chicago Stingers. That game will be played here next Sunday afternoon. Also a two o'clock start on Sunday the 11th. It'll be on Monday, this will air on Monday the 12th on Time Warner Cable in Indianapolis. And Comcast channel at that point by channel 13 on Comcast, and Wave TV channel 53. In June, Wave goes Countywide on cable systems everywhere, so you'll be able to see us even better than that. Check uh, check your local listings or call your cable company to find out about the Blast TV network. Here's Oliveira with it far side, trying to chip it here. Jake Trudy is there, so is Kofi D'Souza with Alderson on him. And that one will bounce into the area, and Milovat says it. Jake Trudy takes a tumble. And Alderson trying to get through his man, D'Alvera. And here is Gusto. 
subbed in for Freddie King at the 23rd minute. And Alderson knocks that one here across the near side touchline with 16 and a half minutes and some change to play in the first half. You see assistant coach Mike Sonich will join us at halftime. Rockford dominating the action here in the first half. Randy Whiteford trying to get loose with the ball, but here is Oliveira. And Ken Tometsko lays it off to Shane Schmidt. Schmidt looks none the worse for wear after taking a boot in the face a few minutes back. That's a through ball there, but Milovats has to come up high to take that one away before Mike Verning could cash in with his, what would have been his second goal of the, night, of the day if he was able to get there. Here's Phillips, far side. Up to Gosto. I'll send that one long. Onside was Jacob. But two Raptors there. And now it's Josh Provan. Muscles Lauren Crawford out of the way. Not hard to do because Lauren's only 5'7 and 155. Lauren's quickness and speed obviously overtake his, his physical presence. He's a very quick, fast player. Very good touch on the ball. Oliveira off to D'Souza again. Russell G all over him. And G strips him of the ball. That's where a veteran presence in the back nice line will help you. play by Russell. But Josh Provan will intercept at midfield. This portion of today's game brought to you without interruption by Kroger. We're inside 15 minutes to play in the first half, and the Raptors with a 1-0 lead on the blast here at Coon Stadium. And Randy Whiteford, you see the look on his face after he tapped that one over the near side touchline. Now we see Nick Yusanovic getting up, and perhaps he's going to start warming up. Maybe we'll see Yusanovic enter the game. That crossing ball picked out of the air by Milovats. And Mile has done a, a, a good job in all three starts so far. I mean, Real on good. opening night um, against Milwaukee, gave up two late goals, but he didn't have a chance really on either of them. And then to keep Cleveland, pelted him with 15 shots before they finally got one to him nine minutes into overtime. So Mile, much more comfortable outdoors than he was indoors last summer. That one gets hung up in the air again in the wind. And nobody could get that one. Trudy will wind up and send that one way up high and almost out onto 16th Street if he gets a little more under it. Well, that'll surprise you driving down 16th Street <laughs> to see one of those come in your window. Mele's already made you know one great save today and keeping this game from going from one nothing to two nothing. So he's he's definitely doing his job back there and he's trying to communicate to his defense and make sure that they're organized and they're tracking guys coming through because the Raptors, as we said before, are, are having guys coming into the far post, near post, and they're, and they're coming through unmarked, and that's a dangerous situation for a goalkeeper because he wants his defense to be able to pick those guys up. So his job right now is, is going to be communicating. You can see him right now very vocal with his defense, and that's important for uh, Mille's, Mille's game today. And also very important that he not give up another goal because the way his mates are going, I mean, they have played some 220-plus minutes so far this season, and no one has yet to find the back of the net. It's tough to do when you're a goalie when you know that any mistake can mean you make one mistake and that'll be it. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it, is, it is a tough position. You can, you can make a bad pass in midfield and, or, or, or take a shot offensively and, and miss a shot, but when you're a goalkeeper and you make a mistake, even though it generally is not the fault of the goalkeeper, it results in a, in a, in a goal, and goalkeepers are very sensitive to those situations. <laughs> and here's Lauren Crawford stripping his man of the ball. And Phillips will go down on the far side, play on, they say, as here's Scott Lamphere. Sending a through ball, but cleared away by Russell G. And Alistair Steele has it. Gusto will grab a hunk of jersey and try to pull him off the ball, but he gets it loose to Jake Trudy first, and now Lamphere has it in the center circle. 12 minutes to play, first half. Rockford one, Indiana Blast nothing. At this point in time, the, the, the Blast have have gotten a little bit better structure in midfield. They they still have yet to surmount any kind of a major attack. And Rockford, at this point in time, we've got a lot more lot more time to play in this game. But this half has belonged to Rockford. Rockford, as we said, off to a 2-0 start. They won 
both games of a road trip down to Texas a couple of weeks ago. Beat Houston 4-3 in shootout and then beat Austin, a new team to the Pro League this year, 2-1 on a goal with just six seconds left in overtime. And it looks like we're going to see Nick Usanovic come in for Isang Jacob here. And now Eric or Mark Eric Nichols is also warming up here along the, the near side. So Nichols may see his first action. He's motioning for Usanovic to go in, and Usanovic, a very skilled player on the ball, but has yet to show the, the kind of spark that led the blast to sign him. Jimmy McDonald is hoping that maybe bringing him in off the bench will give him a new perspective on things, and maybe it'll pay off offensively. Alderson trying to send it up ahead, but Trudy sends it back the other way. And now Oliveira will chip it up ahead, burning just onside. Milovac had to watch it. He was right at the edge of that box where he can and cannot use his hands if he's outside that box. And we're un under 11 minutes to go now as Yusanovic takes off the warm-up. Nermin Yusanovic played the last couple years in the German third division. Where in his career over there, he averaged a goal a game, but that prowess not been evident thus far in two games for the blast. Here's Kenny Tometsko. As a coach, you make decisions whether to start players or not start players. And like I said earlier, sometimes it could, by not starting them, could, could really burn them up and, and fire them up and have them come on there and, and create a spark. Sometimes it backfires and, and, the, and the player gets uh, disappointed and, and, and loses a little bit of confidence and lo loses a little bit of fire. So we'll see how how Nick responds to it. Hopefully he'll, he'll come in with a spark and with a little bit of a force in, in the offensive zone here and, and, and create some things for him. The other thing that's going on too in the back, the, the Raptors are really serving the ball in the air quite a bit. And George Crawford, without any question, is the best guy they've got in the back, in the air back there. So he has to be a lot a lot more involved and, and, and maintain his, his focus. And when those balls are coming in and try to compete for every ball he can because his strength is, is is in the air, and if he can if he can do that and time those balls well, then then the Raptors will have a little bit more of a difficult time. But he's getting a lot of pressure right now because they are they are putting it in. So Jacob is out, and Usanovic is in, and also for Rockford, Joe Carver has come in for Kofi D'Souza. Joe Carver is a great story. When he was 18, he was equipment guy for the Chicago Power of the NPSL. They had a bunch of guys get hurt. And next thing you know, he had to suit up for 16 games. But he was doing it as a, an amateur player, a developmental player, so he was not paid. So he kept his amateur standing and then was able to go to the University of Southern Indiana, where he was a very good player. In fact, a two-time All-American down there at USI in Evansville and had three goals and two assists last season. He's already got two assists this season. He, so Joe Carver, number 11, comes in off the bench for Roland Hahn's Raptors as we're under now the nine-minute mark. as Akers and Crawford go up in the air for that 50-50 ball, and there's a mismatch because Akers is a couple inches higher, taller, and it's Lamphere far side. So Jimmy McDonald has already made two of his four field player substitutions. In the USISL, you can make five subs, a goalie and four field players, and he has brought in Gusto and Yusanovic for Freddie King and Isang Jacob, so he has changed forwards. So he... A quick trigger for Jimmy today as he pulls both forwards after not getting anything going offensively in the first 45 minutes of play here at Coon Stadium. Again, he's just trying to he's just trying to see somebody step it up and and, and take charge. Let's go down in the field again to Chris Baker. Beck. Yeah, Ken, uh, Gosto's uh, visibly uh, frustrated. He's um, uh, having a tough time with the, with the midfield. He's putting the pressure up in the front, and there's no support coming. And, uh, and I think as a result, uh, Jimmy McDonald's made some changes to uh, try and up the fitness level. You can see visibly that uh, uh, the players are struggling a bit, and uh, so those changes, I think, uh, have to do with fitness more than anything else. Ken? All right, thanks, Beck. And there was Joe Carver sending it across to Oliveira. Under seven minutes to go now, Oliveira in the area shoots that one over the fence and up onto the far side. 
you can see that's if there has been one complaint about some of the European players, Usanovic and Gosto, is that their frustration level, they're not, they're not uh, shy about showing their frustration with their teammates. They want things to go well, as all the players do, but they uh, have been known to make their feelings known perhaps a bit too much. They're very demanding, and they're... They're competitors. They want to. They want to come out here and they want to perform well, and they want the team to perform well. And when things don't go well, they're not afraid to let guys know, "Hey, pick it up," and that's what's going on. There's a fine line sometimes. That some guys when they do that, they're called leaders, and sometimes when they do that, they're called it, other things, not so nice. It depends on how your your, your teammates around you react right. to it. No question. And it helps. It hurts too that uh, Captain Craig Ginsburg not in there today. He's a, not only a vocal leader, but he leads by example. Very good choice as captain, but sitting out today with a hamstring pull. And here's Lauren Crawford as the Blast try to mount some sort of an attack, something they have not been able to do. Chip it over to Gusto inside the area. Gusto tries to get around Lamphere, lays it off at Shane Schmidt, and now Usanovic loses it, and there's the shot by Phillips that goes high and wide. But at least a little glimmerings of an offense there, Dan, with under six minutes to go, and the crowd gives him a hand for the effort. Obviously the best opportunity for the Blast today. They showed great composure getting into the box and maintaining their control. Mark Mark wants that one back. <laughs> he wants that one back. He knew, he knew that that ball could have been in the back of the net. And it was the two guys who'd been subbed in who kind of made that play happen. And that Gosto sent it across and Usanovic tapped it off. But yeah, Usanovic laid it up perfectly for him. And there Carver was offside as there were not two defenders between he and the goal at the time the ball was passed to him. So here's Lauren Crawford. Another All-State player at Lawrence Central, as his brother George was. Played at College of DuPage. This one's tapped on, and Howder has to grab that one out of the air off the head of a teammate. How Ken Tibetsko at midfield, battling Carver for it. We're under five minutes to go in the first half. And the Blast, at least in the last couple minutes, have shown a little more spring in the step and a little, perhaps a little bit more of a spark, but need to see more of the same. Carver lays it off to D'Souza. Or not D'Souza, rather, Oliveira. Phillips loses that one at midfield to Lamphere. Wasn't he master of the pan flute? Was that, oh, no, it was Zamphir. I thought it was Lamp, not Lamphere. Zamphir. Here's Jake Trudy along the near side, marked by George Crawford. You almost have to go to, to, to school just to announce and pronounce some of these names. You know, you've, we've done the indoor and the outdoor. There's some of these guys are from all over the, the, the world, and uh, you're doing pretty good. But like them all, thank yeah, you. You're pretty good. And here's Carver again, but that one goes off Russell G and out of play. But one of the things about the USISL, at least at this level, is that of the 18 active players on each team's game day roster, no more than five can be foreign players. The others have to be American citizens. And so they're trying to build more grassroots soccer. Very similar to Third the, corner the format of, the of what the MLS does. Right. Third corner kick of the game for Rockford. And Usanovic sends this one up ahead. Or Gusto sent it up to Usanovic. Time running down now, first half. You see the time, 3.23 and counting. Rockford with a 1-0 lead. Ken Tomash, Dan Capsalis with you on the Blast TV Network. Second of 10 broadcasts this season. And now we see our third substitution here with time running out in the first half as Jimmy McDonald is going to send Eric Nichols into the game. Looks Nichols like. from Ohio State, another player who played with the Zogs, the USISL, and he's going to come in for Shane Schmidt. So Schmidt done for the day. And we'll try to get a report from Chris Baker on how serious that injury was to Shane Schmidt. But Nichols gets into the game, and again, you see a young player with fresh legs getting into the game. Clock continues to run under three minutes now. And here is Eric Nichols, number 12. And now Russell G. Head looking for Alderson, but that went too far for Allen. And out of play along the near side. Rockford throws it in on the near side. And I think they'll be happy to play out these last couple of minutes here of the first half, go in up 1-0, knowing that they have dominated and things at least from their end have to be they have to be feeling pretty good. They're in control at this point in time and, and Jimmy's got to get these guys in the locker room and really 
Try to figure out a way to, to motivate him to, to, to get a little bit more aggressive, not only in midfield, but in the attack. And all the guys up front, Gosto and Isanovic right now, are eager for the ball. But as you see right here, the wing back coming through completely unmarked. That's going to hurt the blast. They serve it up. Now it's a dangerous ball. Once again, we see the wing, midfield, wing back coming through unmarked. Those guys up front have to at least try to put pressure on those guys and track them. If they don't, you get a free cross into the box and a scoring opportunity, and it's that fast and that simple. Quickly down on the field to Chris Baker. Beck? Yeah, Ken, uh, Shane Schmidt uh, didn't have any problems with his face. I think uh, Coach McDonald just made the change, one uh, tactical change, and also uh, fitness. Shane seemed to be uh, struggling a little bit out there, and so he went ahead and made the change. Ken, back to you. All right, Chris. And now, strangely enough, Dan, if I look on the side, I see it looks like Ernie Yarbrough is actually warming up. I don't think he's getting ready to come in the game, though. I think he's getting ready to take a birthday club uh, shootout against the two kids celebrating birthdays here today. And so Ernie has to get ready to do that at halftime. It's part of the fun coming up as halftime now just 45 ticks away. And Eric Nichols, just into the game for the blast, has it on the far side. The Blast, who have only really mounted one or two halfway decent scoring chances and haven't cashed in on either of them, find themselves down 1-0 to the Rockford Raptors in an important game not only in the North Central Division of the D3 Pro League, but also, as we've mentioned, a U.S. Open Cup qualifier. They have four of these, and you got to figure to move on to the next round and get a chance at the oldest soccer trophy in America. They will have to win three out of these four games. Trudy sends that one across the end line, and... Milovac will take his time. I don't even think he'll get the goal kick off before the first half comes to a close. And that will do it for the first half of play. You're tuned to the Indiana Blast TV Network. There's a lot of great stuff your kids can watch on TV and some not so great stuff. So how do you teach them the difference? A new instructional video called Taking Charge of Your TV. It can help. There's nothing complicated here. Just simple common sense steps your family can take together. To get a copy, contact your local cable operator or the Family and Community Critical Viewing Project. They'll teach you to help your kids be better viewers. Some people call them dumb animals. But there's one thing they understand, and a lot of humans don't. That physical activity is an essential part of healthy living. In fact, even moderate physical activity can help reduce your risk factors for heart disease, which makes acting like an animal anything but dumb. A message from the American Heart Association. Time Warner Cable is looking for enthusiastic customer service personnel to join our customer call center. Strong communication skills and a minimum of one year phone experience is required. Available shifts are noon to 11 p.m. Starting pay is commensurate with experience and ranges between $7.75 and $12.85 an hour. If interested, send or fax your resume to our offices and you could be on your way to an exciting career in entertainment communications. In an emergency, doctors you've never met will have only moments to make decisions about your care. They'll need information quickly, your conditions, allergies, medications, physician and family contacts. But you may be unconscious or in so much pain that you can't recall critical details and the risk of complications can increase significantly. Medic Alert provides this information within seconds. Help us help you by wearing the Medic Alert emblem. Call now for free information. Back, back at Coon Stadium in Indianapolis, where the second half just underway between the Rockford Raptors and the Indiana Blast. Rockford with a 1-0 lead. We heard Mike Sonich say they're, they're out of substitutions. Ernie Arbor is the only guy left on the bench, Dan Capsalis. And so the guys who've been brought in, Eric Nichols, Nick Yusanovic, and Matt Gusto, if they, uh, if they don't pay off, I mean, they're out there for the duration. There will be no more substitutions in this game for the Blast. The guys so that are on the field are definitely going to be the guys that are going to make or change this game I, I hope that he give you know Mike sounded like they, they obviously needed some transition to midfield they need a little bit of fire they need a spark they, they're not playing with uh, incredible emotion so hopefully they'll come out of the second half and put something together here 
Now they've switched ends of the field, and so now it'll be Rockford moving right to left. Rockford wearing the Navy jerseys, Navy shorts, and socks. And the Blast wearing white today as opposed to the red they wore in their opener. And all alone here, they send this one across, and Shotty hit the goal post. Boy, talk about setting a guy up. Joe Carver sent that one over to the far side, and that's where Melee's buddy, the goal post, becomes his best friend in that situation. He set up Jake Trudy in a big way, and Trudy hit the poster. This one will be 2 nothing. Let's go down to Chris Baker. Beck. Ken uh, was talking to Ernie Yarbrough, the uh, reserve goalkeeper for the Blast. He said at halftime, uh, Jimmy McDonald told the boys to pick the pace up a little bit, pick up the intensity. He also wanted to see the, uh, the defenders deny the uh, uh, ball going wide for Rockford. They wanted to push the ball inside a little bit more and uh, also wanted to get a little bit more on the attack from the, uh, the outside midfielders, have them push up and support the, the attacking two front runners. Ken? All right. Thanks, Chris. Here's Alan Alderson, far side. We'll see if the Blast took Coach McDonald's advice to heart, as they will need a goal just to get level. They dodged a big bullet right there a minute ago. That right. could really put a, make it even tougher to go down two goals very early in the second half, so. Yes, Carver was all alone on the left side. Crawford will chip this one up into the area, but it'll bounce right to Howder. And he'll send it here along the near side to Mark Schlenker, former NPSL player as well as a few of these Rockford players are. And offside, there was Joe Carver, second offside of the match for Rockford. Dan has opted not to sit down again, <laughs> rather than take his chances with the amazing, incredible fun ride. I, I, at that he least took I, gave the first the, I gave the docs and the trainers something to do at halftime. Yeah. You know what the heck. Players are, players are fine. Between Shane Schmidt's face and your back. Did you little, build this yeah, thing? Who built elbow? this thing? No, in? but somebody uh, <laughs> they put this in for ESPN. I don't think ESPN ever had the problem of falling back over. Oliveira, and that one, that'll be a handball on Ken Tometsko as that one bounced off Oliveira and right up to and hit Tometsko in the forearm. We're just underway in the second half of play from Coot Stadium in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ken Tomash, Dan Capsalis with you on the Blast TV network. Don't forget the Blast are on a three-game homestand beginning here this afternoon. They'll be home Friday night, May the 9th, against the Cincinnati Riverhawks, the Premier League, and then on Sunday, May 11th, the Chicago Stingers come to town. First match between those two I-65 rivals, and that one will also be, as this one is, a U.S. Open Cup qualifier. So it'll be very important as well. The Stingers lost their opener the other night in Houston by a score of 3-2. to two. And now here's Usanovic. Finding a little rare open space over to Gusto and punched out of there by Howder. Excellent job by the veteran to come up and punch that one clear before Gusto could get ahead on it. But still, Usanovic did have some open space and has a little bit of room there to work with on the far side now, so maybe things are opening up a bit. That one's stolen away from Randy Whiteford on the far side. And here comes Rockford again. It's a foot race, and Nichols wins it, knocks Carver down. Back to Russell G. Well, there's a little bit of the exuberance that Jimmy McDonald was hoping to see. And now it's Phillips far side at the only shot of the first half for the blast. And Alderson will send this one long. They can do a little bit more of what Yusanovic just did, get the ball to the outside, serving it up, and getting it in the box and challenging. They'll have better opportunities. It's nice to see them at least going that route and trying that, getting that opportunity. But you see the ability I talked about earlier, Brett Hodder, he anticipates very well. And it's tough, it's tough to serve a ball in without him being involved in some way. So they've got to try to isolate him on the line and get it more toward the, around the 18 and try to keep him in that, in that six box and get a good opportunity where he's not involved. This portion of today's game brought to you without interruption by Soccer Unlimited. We cover the entire field. In that first half, the Raptors outshot the Blast 
Ilya Milovac credited with four saves in the first half. Brad Howder did not have to make any. The Raptors had three corner kicks. The Blast still looking for their first, and the fouls 4-2 favor the Raptors. We're under 39 minutes to go in regulation. Remember, if this one's tied after 90 minutes of play, as they did Friday night in Cleveland, they'll play 15 minutes of sudden death overtime. Milovac comes out to try to punch that one clear, and Alderson will say that that one went off a Raptor player. But no, they point to the corner flag, and it'll be the fourth corner kick of the afternoon for Rockford. Every restart situation here now becomes very important for the Blast offensively and defensively, obviously. They have to make sure they maintain their communication and the structure and defense here and, and relieve some pressure for Mele. Stephen McDonald has already cleared the bench. He's made three substitutions in the first half. You're allowed four, but he doesn't have another player on the bench. And Carver sent that one far over the end line. So Rockford looks like they need some work on their set pieces because none of their four corner kicks have been particularly effective. No, they've had, they've had the opportunities without any question, and they've yet to capitalize on any, any of them to the Blast's favor. But the Blast have, have also not had the opportunities in, in, in corners as well. So if we can get it reversed here, maybe they can get, a, uh, get another opportunity. Here's Scott Lamphere for Rockford up ahead to Jason Akers, marked by Lauren Crawford. And Josh Provan on the far side with some open space. Mark Phillips marking him to Alistair Steele. First of four meetings this season between the Raptors and the Blast. These guys will get to know each other very well. They'll play again. To make sure they maintain their communication and the structure and defense here and and relieve some pressure for Mele. Stephen McDonald has already cleared the bench. He's made three substitutions in the first half. You're allowed four, but he doesn't have another player on the bench. And Carver sent that one far over the end line. So Rockford looks like they need some work on their set pieces because None of their four corner kicks have been particularly effective. No, they've had, they've had the opportunities without any question, and they've yet to capitalize on any, any of them to the Blast's favor. But the Blast have, have also not had the opportunities in, in, in corners as well. So if we can get it reversed here, maybe they can get, a, uh, get another opportunity. Here's Scott Lamphere for Rockford up ahead to Jason Akers, marked by Lauren Crawford. And Josh Provan on the far side with some open space. Mark Phillips marking him to Alistair Steele. First of four meetings this season between the Raptors and the Blast. These guys will get to know each other very well. They'll play again in a couple of weeks up in Rockford and then again the week after that up in Rockford before the Raptors will come here in the next to last game of the season in late July. Lamphere takes the free kick, sends it up for Jake Trudy, heads it into the area. Taking that shot was Mike Ferning, who scored the only goal of the match so far, but he wasn't able to get a real good foot into it, and Milovac able to grab it. Gusto heads that one up ahead. Here's Phillips in the area. Phillips with a shot, and he just missed again. Phillips has taken both blast shots, so they're, they're getting him a little bit of space, and he's able to get a foot into it, but both times he's been... High and wide. The only only thing besides scoring a goal that you that you look for in your attack is, is getting the opportunity to score a goal. And, and Mark has certainly had those those opportunities. It's nice to see him getting involved in, in inside the box, though. It'll come. If he if he continues to make those runs and they continue to get the ball to him, he can definitely put the ball in the back of the net. And we hope he does it before the end of this game. He's got tremendous size and strength, and he can muscle his way into the box and really position his body well to shield the ball and, and maintain possession and get those shots off. He was an All-American at Kenyon College in Ohio. I watched him play several times at Kenyon, and uh, he dominated the field in many of the situations. 
Now here's George Crawford with it in midfield. Nice move to get away from Akers. I didn't think George Crawford had that in him. That was an offensive move. But now he holds up his man and lets Nichols get in there and it goes off Oliveira and so it'll be a throw in. And Crawford will take the throw in along the near side. Playing in front of the home folks today. Good to be back home. He's a, one of those fortunate guys who's gotten to play his entire pro career so far in his hometown. That doesn't happen often in this game. And here's a yellow card immediately to Scott Lamphere in the 55th minute. Lamphere came in a little bit too hard there, and he gets whistled for the first yellow card of the match. And so the free kick taken by Lauren Crawford. Key here now is just to serve it into the box and keep, keep Brett Hodder, the keeper for the Raptors, isolate on his line, don't let him come on out and challenge in the air in the box here. Tometsko is in the box along with most of the blast players. Randy Whiteford on the far side, Alderson is outside, but Phillips is in there, so is Lauren's big brother George. Yusanovic and Gusto and Ken Tometsko, the biggest of the blast field players at 6'2", 180. Crawford puts a foot into it, sends it across. It got caught up in the wind a little bit. And it'll be sent across the line on the far side. I believe that was Phillips once again. You could see that one get caught up in the breeze again, Dan, and so it's kind of hard to plan something when Mother Nature has other ideas. It's tough. It is tough. And it was a well-placed ball. And you see George competing for the, for the, for the ball in the air, and that's his, his forte. And in that situation, Brett Hodder was definitely isolated on the on the line. They just couldn't get a good shot off on it. Russell G wins that 50-50 ball, and here's Nichols up ahead to Tometsko with collapsing defense on him. G sent that one a little bit too high for Phillips, and Rockford has it in their own end. Provan up ahead, and offside was Joe Carver. I was talking to Craig Ginsburg before the game, and I said, Ginny, you know, if they score, that means that my bet's off. You're not going to be the guy scoring the first goal in the franchise history. And he goes, no, no, no. If, 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 he goes, I hope we win today, but if, 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 it, if, it, if they score and it's not him, he goes, it doesn't count because I wasn't in the game. Oh, okay. So it's, it's when, when he's playing, apparently, is when, when, uh, when it's official. But we hope that uh, somebody does put the ball in the back but of the net here. At this point, we hope it's not Ginsburg who scores the first goal because that would mean it would be no <laughs> earlier than Friday against Cincinnati. And now here is Rockford, it's Joe Carver, who has been a real spark for Rockford since entering the game as a substitute. Randy Whiteford clears that one. Here's Alistair Steele at midfield with Usanovic coming in to take it away from him. And now Phillips gets it in Randy Whiteford, working out of the blast end. A little too far for his forwards. And Rockford will send it back the other way. See the time left in regulation, 32 minutes, 20 seconds. And Milwaukee, Rockford offside once again. A minute ago, we saw Yusanovich come back into the midfield and track that player going through and strip him of the ball. That's what has to happen. The attacking players can't just simply sit up there and wait for the ball. They have to generate and, and, and generate a transition defensively as well and get involved in the, in the midfield. And that recovery run by Yusanovich was, was excellent because that's exactly what needs to happen. Even though he's taken himself out of the attacking role at that point, he needs to try to get himself back involved in the midfield, track those guys coming through or the Raptors come through the midfield completely unmarked. And Nichols has that one go off his foot, battling Schlenker for it. And it'll be to Lamphere to throw it in at midfield. Up looking for Carver, battling Nichols for it. Carver dancing around Eric and finally goes down. I think he just tripped himself up with all that fancy footwork. I don't think anybody got it in on him, but we're gonna get a yellow card, no less, to Eric Nichols. It's either Nichols or G, hard to see. I but think it was Russell G. Russell G, but Carver, who could be nominated for an Oscar for that acting job, basically tripped himself up and G gets hit with the yellow card. Sometimes soccer players can receive <laughs> Oscars for their, their antics on the field, and, and especially offensive players like Carver. They know how to fall. They know when to fall. They know how to make it look good, and that was definitely one of those times. Comes in the 59th minute, as you see Mark Phillips, the acting captain today, with Craig Ginsburg sitting it out with a hamstring pull. 
Trying to plead his case to the referee. No dice. Clock will start again on the kick by Schlenker as he sends it into the area and cleared out of there by Russell G. Clock on the move again. 31 minutes and counting left in this game. And again, Rockford offside. Don't forget our next broadcast on the Blast TV network on Monday, May the 12th. As we'll have Sunday the 11th game for you against the Chicago Stingers. It'll be at 8 p.m. on Wave Channel 53 in Indianapolis. Time Warner and Comcast Channel 13. It'll be on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock up in Carmel on Channel 6. There's Howder sending it long, far side. 30 minutes to go in the game. Finding himself all alone as Akers with a shot, and that one just missed as Akers was all alone once again, and the Raptor forwards are not having much trouble finding wide open spaces. That whole play started with Brad Hodder. You see his quick distribution from the goal out to midfield. That completely started the attack, and you, and, and you very rarely ever think of the goalkeeper as an attacking player, but very, uh, very smart by Hodder to release the ball and distribute the ball to midfield. And then they switch to the point of attack and have a guy running in the far side. That was a great, great opportunity for the Raptors. And the whole play started with Brad Hodder, their, their goalkeeper. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. You see the our camera folks trying their best to battle Mother Nature's wind. This is an incredibly windy day here in Coon Stadium, and up here in the booth, it's just as windy. Here's George Crawford just outside the area. Crawford stays on his feet, left-footed shot, and Howder has to fall to make his first save of the game. I will claim that it was the wind that blew me off right. the stand earlier in the first half. And when Crawford, and now we have another player go down, and another yellow card, this one to Kent Temetsko. With 29 minutes to go, let's take a look at it one more time. You see Temetsko. He does come right across, right it does there. hit him right there, and it is a delayed reaction. Oliveira seems to be he, fine at first, but then when he comes down on that right foot, he's in obvious pain. So Temetsko did clip him. He does stay in the game, though. And now Jake Trudy in that far corner. And now Oliveira not hurt enough to not take a shot. He does get it to Verning, who has the only goal of the game. And now here's Carver with Nichols on him. Carver in the area. And loose ball cleared away by Russell G. This portion of today's game brought to you without interruption by Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. Quickly, here come the blast again to Lauren Crawford. Gusto doing a nice job there, coming back into the midfield and tracking the player through and just trying to get the ball back up in the attack. There's Phillips to Yusanovic, who waited for that one to come to him rather than going up to the ball. And now it's Lauren Crawford again. Mark Phillips leaves it for Nichols. Nichols will chip it up. When it gets high up in that swirling wind, it's tough and headed away by the Raptor defense. And another Raptor player down on the far side, grabbing a, a knee. Well, the blasts aren't that physical, folks. I mean, seen a lot that was of, a late, it was a little bit of a late slide. So more injury time here, as once again, they stop the clock as the Raptor player injured with just under now 27 and a half minutes to go, but back up and shaking it off was Alex Umensky. And Scott Lamphere here on the near side with George Crawford on him. Lamphere tries to send it through to Carver on side, and now Carver has it here along the near side. Phillips trying to get through Acres to get there. They'll call the, the foul on Mark. After this free kick by Lamphere, now let's take a look and see how 
Umansky hurt himself as his man slid in there and took out the legs. That one over the end line, knocked over by the blast. It'll be yet another corner kick for the Raptors. And Mark Schlenker set to put a left foot into it. And does, and headed out of there by Lauren Crawford. To Gusto, heads it up ahead to Yusanovic. But Rockford controls. Here's Umansky. Alex Umansky gets away from Gusto. Gusto tries to give him a little business as he goes by, but Umansky's still up with the ball. Whiteford on him, far side. Now two defenders, Whiteford and Alderson on Umansky, who shields him with his body. And now Tometsko on the far side. Oliveira. And this one actually went out over on that far side. A late call, but it'll be a throw in for the blast on the far side. Just a reminder for Blast tickets or any other information about the Indiana Blast, call 327-KICK, 327-5425. Get your tickets for the upcoming matches. So the homestand continues this Friday night and Sunday afternoon as Cincinnati's here Friday night and Chicago on Sunday afternoon. Nichols again lost that one across the near side touchline. And Schlinker will throw it in. Here's Oliveira, looks like he's recovered from his injury. And Russell G. Schlenker muscles Lauren Crawford out of the way and here's Nichols on the ball. Lauren Crawford, G near side. 25 minutes to go in regulation. The Blast still looking for their first goal of the season. Alderson far side at midfield. He'll send it through, but Tometsko was offside. And at this point, Dan, there's not a whole lot Jimmy can do. It's not like he can make too many strategic moves. Uh, no, not at all. He just has to hope that the midfield, again, maintains possession. And with the, with the wind being a factor here, and, and a lot of times the environment is a factor in soccer, and the wind, uh, you, you would think, oh, it's not that big a deal, but it is. And they've got to keep the ball on the ground and, and play the feet and maintain a little bit more possession. Try to just generate some kind of an offensive thrust, and, and they're not doing that right now. They, they're playing the ball down the, down the middle a little bit much, try to get it to the outside and serve it up. That's the way that they're going to get the ball in the back of the net and, and scoring opportunities. The Raptors are, are, are pretty sound back there defensively, and they're structured very well. So it's, it's difficult to penetrate through the middle. They're going to have to bring the ball to the outside, serve it across, and challenge for it in the box. And thanks to that post hit early on in the second half of play, it's still only a 1-0 game, so anything can happen from this point if they, can, if they can just get a goal and get level and perhaps send it to overtime or take their chances in shootout. And they'd love to get two here in the last 23 minutes and win it 2-1. And... The situation they're in with being down a goal they want to make sure that they don't, they don't make any mental mistakes defensively and give up a second goal. But at the same time, they have to be a little bit risky and sending their backs and, and, and their midfielders through trying to generate a, an attack and, and tie this game up. So it's a little bit of a fine line you have to play with being careful not to make mental mistakes in the back, but also going through and attacking a little bit and maybe leaving yourself a little vulnerable. And here is Schlenker. And Oliveira put that one high. That's a nice crossing ball sent down here after Usanovic had nutmegged Lamphere, and then Lamphere turned around and took the ball right back and came down the other way. You, you really do see, Dan, how much they miss Craig Ginsburg. His speed, not only his speed and quickness, but leadership just out on the field absolutely. and just having him there. Without question. It he's, is a big loss. He's a valuable player to this team, and whenever you don't have a player like Craig on the field, you're definitely going to miss a beat. Everybody on this field is worthy of stepping up and playing and, and doing a good job. And it's not like uh, Craig's out there all by himself by any means, but they definitely do miss his, his tenacity. Look his, at Mele. Mele had to go all the way, jump over the fence <laughs> to get that ball and bring it back into play. Trying to get him to break a legitimate sweat back there. <laughs> Time now working in Rockford's favor very much so as we're at 22 minutes and change left in regulation and Rockford clinging to that 1-0 lead that they've had since the third minute when Mike Verning scored his third of the season. Free kick far side, Rockford, they get it in play in a hurry and up to Jake Trudy, but Russell G is there and he'll 
kick it right to Milovac. And Mile sends that one over into the far side stands. And Rockford up and moving once again. All Rockford has to do for the next 21 minutes here is just maintain their shape, make sure they're not missing any marks. Again, not making any mental mistakes. They've got a goal lead. They're in a comfortable situation. Uh, they're in control of this game right now, and it's up to the blast to change that. Milovac will send this one up high. Usanovic tries to win it. Lamphere wins the ball, though. And now as they play volleyball with it, ball hasn't touched the ground in a while. Crawford's shaved noggin gets in there, but sends it across the near side touchline. And I'll say it went off Lamphere, and Lauren will throw it in. That one, that ball never did get into play. But still, no, they're saying it did, yeah. Give it over to Rockford. Well, now it will definitely be a throw in for the blast along the near side. Over to Russell G. Now Randy Whiteford, the rookie from IUPUI, with it on the far side, trying to get around Carver. Nice little one-touch play to Gosto. Gosto chips it into the area, but Howder is there to grab it out of the air. Brad's had a pretty routine day back there. They haven't. Onside, Usanovic. Howder out of there. And Usanovic not able to keep his footing, or that one would have been in the back of the net. Now they have another chance. Is Crawford on right wing? Marked by Lamphere. Or Alistair Steele, rather. Gets around Steele and gets that one right to Howder. Blast have had chances. A lack of a finisher has hurt him thus far in the first three games. Carver on G. G sends Carver to the turf. Free kick to Rockford. And here are the Raptors again. Oliveira into the area. Take that shot. One off his own man, Jason Akers. Now up ahead to Usanovic on side. But could not control it. Now here's Phillips. Now it's a foot race. And they'll call the foul on Phillips as he was just stretching out a foot and Provan went down. He'll plead his case, but to no avail. Phillips made a, 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 a great run to try to track that ball and, and keep it in the defensive zone. Barely even touched that guy. And he took right. a sprawling, sprawling fall to make it look like he just, I mean, that's, that, that is ridiculous. I can't believe that was called. That was not a good call. Lamphere far side, under 19 minutes to go. That's, I'd have to say that was the second best fall we saw today. <laughs> Folks at home didn't see the one that you took in the first half. That's yeah, all right. They don't need to see that one. I'm feeling that one. We don't have a replay I'm of that one, feeling that one. Here's Rockford again with a 1-0 lead. The ball and 18 minutes and 23 seconds to hold on to win again. And here they come, centering across Oliveira. Kicked out of there as Carver. That was Carver who came in all alone on Milovac, but Milovac stuck out, stuck out a left foot. Knocked it clear. Melee's keeping him in the game right now. That was a two-on-O situation. That definitely was a was an outstanding scoring opportunity for the Raptors. Gusto to Crawford. Lauren Crawford with a shot, and that one a little bit closer, but still off the mark. And now we're going to see the second Rockford substitution of the day as Howie Phillip is set to come in. And he'll come in for Jake Trudy. So Phillip in, Trudy out with 17 and a half minutes to play in the game. As we mentioned, Jimmy McDonald has nobody left on his bench that he can send in. Once, once you're done for the day, once you come out of the game, you're done for the day. Gusto puts a little pressure on. Crawford will steal this one away at the top of the area. Crawford keeps it alive, but kicked away before they could get it off to Gusto, and Gusto voicing his displeasure with the recent turn of events. See how Lauren's quickness and speed, you know, you don't have to be big to play this game. If you're quick and you're fast and you've got the skill and the touch, you can position yourself very well to get 
in the goal scoring situations or create them and Lauren does that very well, especially inside the box and we see that quickness right there. And now the first corner kick of the day for the blast as that one went off our Raptor player and over the end line. And we'll see what Gusto is able to do on the first set piece here with 1640 to play. As he's saying Jacob watches from the bench, they'll send it long, a little bit too long as Usadovic was trying to get there and it'll be sent here into the stands along the near side. Another throw in for the blast as Whiteford up and into Usanovic. Trying to get away from Oliveira. He sends Oliveira down and Usanovic will get the foul. It's been a little rough and tumble at times today. Not only on the field, but in the booth, but enough on that. <laughs> 16 minutes to go in You're regulation. You're abusing me. <laughs> it's it's going to become a classic episode, I We think. kid because we care. You can... Uh, <laughs> Hang out with Mark LeBeer, the injured blast <laughs> forward, who is icing his knee at this moment. Ah, uh, knee, that's nothing. <laughs> Oliveira lays Poor it off guy. far side for Provan. He'll send it into the box all alone, and he headed that one completely the wrong way. Mike Verning was yeah, in good position for that, and he just headed it, rather than north and south, headed it east-west. Boy, does he want that one back. He had a completely empty net, and Mele was totally caught off the line there. That was, uh, that was a goal. So the Blasts are definitely do dodging a few bullets here without any question. Let's see if they can capitalize on the fact that the Raptors have not capitalized on, on their latest few opportunities. Any more cliches you want to get in there, Dan? You had uh, a couple. Uh, you had uh, a couple. Like that one back and uh, dodges a bullet right there yeah, in the same breath. Isn't that good? All right. <laughs> if you say they can't buy a goal, I'll throw you off the thing again. <laughs> 15 minutes to play in regulation here. This portion of today's game brought to you without interruption by Kroger. And 15 more minutes for the Blast to get something going offensively. Here is Mike Verning, who has the only goal of the match thus far. Nice little two-man game with Schlenker. Stays on his feet and falls just outside the area as he tripped over the feet of either Lauren Crawford or Russell G. So a free kick upcoming just outside the area. They've got to make sure they're well organized here. Dangerous situation. This is obviously an opportunity for a shot. We'll see what the Raptors do. Sometimes there's different set pieces, but when you're this close normally, they're just going to go for the shot and, and either try to get it directly in the net, obviously, or have guys chasing and looking for a rebound. So their organization defensively right here is very crucial. See Oliveira there over the ball. And Jason Akers as Schlenker is there, as is Joe Carver. So they have four guys right around the ball. Only either Oliveira or Schlenker will take it, but a little misdirection here to try to throw off that wall. Can't be quite sure where the shot is going to come from. Under 14 minutes to play now. Blast on the short end of a 1-0 score to the Rockford Raptors in not only an important D3 Pro League game, but a U.S. Open Cup qualifying match as well. Oliveira runs off, and the shot goes just over the crossbar. That was a good effort. Well taken. Here, as you see, as he falls right over Russell G, trips right over the feet there just outside the box. It's a borderline call, but there you have it. Here's Milovats, who's got to be given serious consideration for our Star of the Game Award, with as he has kept the blast in this one. Yeah, he's made several nice saves, and he's done a, he's done a very good job. He's yeah. been a busy guy. And it is not over yet because here comes Rockford on the attack again as Joe Carver gets it to Oliveira. Sends it through in the area, but nobody was home. And then this one skips right to Mele. He'll send it long. It's Gusto and Provan battle for it. That one went off Provan and out over on the far side. Next 12 minutes or so, all they have to do, they have to attack. They have no choice. They have to leave themselves a little vulnerable, get the midfield going through. And, and generate something here. They've got 12 minutes to try to come up and equalize this game, and they have to give it every effort they can. Russell G here to Eric Nichols. Nichols will send it into the area. Lauren Crawford is there, but there's only so high he can jump. 
Actually, it was George Crawford. And Lauren sent that one high and was picked out of the air by Brad Howder. So a successful homecoming for him so far as gets his first start of the year in front of the home folks. And thus far, with 11.39 to go, is on the long end of a 1-0 score. Here's Ken Temetsko. Trying to send it through for the blast, but could not get it to Usanovic. Stolen away the other, and back the other way come the Raptors. And it looks like we're going to see Roland Hahn send in another substitution as John Gosling set to come in, get him a little bit of playing time towards the end of regulation of this match. And some wide open space here for Rockford. And a little late offside call, and Oliveira will protest it, but he was definitely offside. Blast have done a, a, a really good job in the back here, uh, anticipating the ball coming through and, and, and pulling up. They're not really playing an offside trap in a sense, but the Raptors have gotten a little bit anxious with their runs, and that's probably the sixth or seventh time they've been offsides. And uh, you always rely on the linesman to help you out a little bit and make sure that he's seen it properly, and so far he's been running the money. Loose ball in front and a collision there between Gusto and Howder as Gusto came on the dead run into the area. And it looks like he took that one in the solar plexus and had the wind knocked out of him. And this one chipped forward as now the Blaster ostensibly playing two men down because Gusto is down back in the penalty area at the other end, trying desperately to catch his breath. And Usanovic is trying to help him out. He just ran smack into Brad Howder, and Howder didn't seem to feel the effects at all. Now trainer Jim Tindall is going to go out and have a look at Gusto, who is still trying to catch his breath. We hope it's nothing more serious than that. Brad coming out of the box, just picked the ball up, and, and they just they ran right into each other. It was a legal play, but it looks like he... Howder's a big guy, 6'3", 195, and sturdy. Gusto himself is 6'2", 192, so that's a couple of big bodies colliding right there. And if you studied physics at all, you know that there's a lot of force generated there with two guys on the dead run running smack into each other. It wasn't one of my better subjects, but I did, <laughs> I did go to class occasionally. Jim Chindle tending to Matt Gusto now with the clock stopped with under 10 minutes to go now, and we will see substitution. Let's take a look at that. As you see, Gusto was on the way in, and you see Howder had the ball and ran smack. That's almost like a wide receiver coming across the middle and getting nailed by a big, bad defensive back. Keepers are trained very well to, to when they're competing for the ball to make sure they utilize their body in, in, a, in a legal way, and that was a legal play. Just Gusto just uh, was in the wrong place there trying to compete for the ball, and Brad got to it first and just ran him right over. So. John Gosling has come into the game now with under 10 minutes to play, and he'll replace Joe Carver. Carver, I thought, did a very nice job for Roland Hahn. And he's coming in as a sub and has now since departed. And now the Rockford giving a throw in over on the far side, but showing their class and that they threw it right into melee because they know that the blast a man down as Gosto Injured, the wind knocked out of him, and there is nobody to send in. So for right now, if Gusto leaves the game, as it appears he will, the Blast will be playing the last 10 minutes of this one, a man down. Ferning dancing around his man, Nichols, his opposite number. Gusto is coming here to the near side. We'll try to get Chris Baker to check on his condition, but it appears as though he just took a wicked hit in the upper chest and had the wind knocked out of him. We don't know if he will return to the game. Playing down a goal and down a man for the last 10 minutes against a team that has dominated you to this point is, and now we do see Gosto is returning. He's in some pain, but he's going to get up a shot, obviously. And Ernie Yarbrough is warming up here along the near side, so I wonder if he's just doing that to keep warm or if they actually had thoughts of putting him in. Putting Big Ernie on the field. Maybe letting Melee go up and play forward. 
<laughs> Milovac has some experience playing up front over in Europe. I think he's the way he's kept him in the game between the pipes, they'd rather keep him there if at all possible. Here's Whiteford far side. And again, Rockford just too quick getting to loose balls, intercepting passes. And Russell G in a foot race there. That was almost as Milovac has to dive on that one as G was just trying to get it back to Mile, but Mike Verning is making it very difficult for him to do that. You see the time now under eight minutes to go as Nichols sends it up. Yusanovic loses it to Alistair Steele. Oliveira, near side Akers, try to get it off to Schlenker, but Nichols is there first and Nichols will send it back to Milovac. Just telling the troops to pick up the pace as he sends it long. And the wind kicks up once again here at Cooch Stadium. Let's go down to Chris Baker. Chris? Ken, uh, Jimmy McDonald's made a couple of tactical changes. He's moved uh, Ken Demesco up to uh, midfield. Now he's playing out with three backs. Uh, also pushed Mark Phillips forward in an attempt to uh, get the tying goal. It looks like Ernie Yarbrough may be uh, coming onto the field. Ken? Yeah, we see Ernie Yarbrough is actually putting on Mark LeBeer's number 19 jersey which, with all apologies to Ernie, <laughs> was not quite made for his 6'1", 235 frame. And we may see Yarbrough go into the game and play the field. <laughs> Ernie's busting out of that shirt. And with that Kroger logo on the back, I'm sorry, he just, he looks like a... He looks like a... Kroger truck, to be honest with you. 6.25 to play now. Lamphere. Hey, if he can generate a spark or get him going, you know, all the more power to him. He just wants to play. I mean, Ernie, a shot. Ernie just wants to play. and He's putting his top back on now, so it looks like he's not going not gonna to make it in there. Six minutes to go now. What Chris was saying is, is Jimmy's made a couple tactical changes, putting more guys in the, in the, in the midfield. He has no choice. At this point in time, they have to take some chances and try to generate a numbers up situation offensively in order to get an opportunity. If they don't do that, then this game's gonna end one nothing. It was a goal in the third minute by Mike Verning, and since then, neither team able to dent the back of the net. Here's Oliveira, Lauren Crawford on him. Here down to Verning. Across to Gosling, who just entered the game as a substitute, gets away from G, but his shot goes off a defender and over to the far side and out of play. And with 5.22 to go, Milovac will get to make a kick in, a goal kick from his own end. Now Jimmy McDonald is going over to talk to the fourth official, perhaps to, oh, they're putting another ball in play. No, they were going to try, but Milovac already out with it. Under five minutes to go now as Alderson has it. Get away from him. Lauren Crawford has it at the center circle. Near side to Brother George. George has it go off his foot and out of play here along the near side touchline. Remember, Cincinnati comes to town on Friday night for a 7.30 game as the homestand continues. And then on Sunday at 2 o'clock, bring mom to brunch on Mother's Day and then Bring her out for an afternoon of soccer as the Chicago Stingers are here. That's also our next TV game. And hopefully by that time, the Blast will have scored. 4.19 to go. Milovac's way out to send that one up into the stratosphere. Alderson outside the box. Alderson with a shot, and that one goes off and up against the fence with 4.06 to play. They're making the right choices with taking those shots. They're, they're just not getting a good handle on the ball right there. But they're 20, 20 to 25 yards away. They can definitely hit that ball and try to get something going. With f less than four minutes, they have to play with some urgency at this point and just get into the box and fight for it a little bit. That's a dejected bench you saw there. Morale was still fairly high after the opening night loss to Milwaukee because Milwaukee, an A-League team, and they did play well. 
then the overtime loss at Cleveland didn't help matters any, but still they battled hard and sent it to overtime. But here today, but not for a couple of, uh, they wanted to hit the post and a wide open net completely missed by Mike Verding. This could be a 3-0 game. And, and it would- Relays made some- Yeah, it would deservedly good so. Good saves as well. Could be three or more, so. The Raptors have had, definitely have had the better opportunities in this game. And, and when you create those types of opportunities, the end result is one of them is gonna go in and it's usually gonna result in a, in a victory for that team, so. They've, they've earned this victory at this point. You know, if, if it stays this way, they've certainly earned it. Looks like Roland Hahn is set to make another substitution here for the final few minutes as Pete Turnes is set to come in. Turnes scored the goal in overtime with six seconds left to give Rockford their second win of the year at Austin a couple of weeks ago. See if he gets in for the final 234 or less of this one. As it looks now as though Rockford is going to improve to 3-0 and, and the blast will fall to 0-3. 0-2 in the league and 0-1 in the cup competition. Unless something drastic happens here in the next two minutes and 17 seconds there's a wrestling match there at midfield between Gosling and Crawford. Results in a free kick for Indiana. And now they will send attorneys in. Clock continues to run though, as they send Oliveira will be the man coming off. And Jimmy McDonald is just incensed that the referee is allowing this incredibly slow substitution to take place as Oliveira taking his time and jogging off to let Turney's come on and that wasted a good 20 seconds. That Jimmy McDonald figures his team could have used. It's a tactic by the coach, uh, the Raptors coach. Roland Hahn as well. Substitutions take time. Here we see the wrestling match going on between Gosling and George Crawford. As they get tied up, this is WWF stuff in the <laughs> lightweight category as Crawford only weighs 150 pounds. And that resulted in a free kick for with which the blast didn't do a whole lot. Phillips at midfield, off to Nichols, and now Phillips is down. He'll get back up, one minute to play in regulation. Gusto heads it into the area, cleared out of there by Rockford. Phillips will track down this sky ball. Here to Russell G, 50 seconds to go now. Serve it in one last time, get something. Lauren Crawford gets free, but that one gets away from him and Lamphere will let it go across the line. And it'll be a corner kick. So here the Blasts have got to hurry. They've got a corner kick and now with 30 seconds to go, this is their last, their last chance. 25 seconds and counting as Gusto will tee it up. He'll send it across. Crawford scores! How about that? The first goal in franchise history and it comes with time running out off the corner kick and it ties this game at one. Georgian's forte just paid off. You see how we've, we've always said how good he is in the air and he's capable of doing that. George Crawford is just thrilled, and that is the end of regulation play as George Crawford comes through on a header with 10 seconds to go to tie the game at one. And we're going to overtime tied at one. If, if George can make it back on the field, I think Jimmy just crushed him with that bear hug. <laughs> it's, it's an outstanding goal. Obviously, the, the set play of the guy coming through in the far post, here's, a, here's the replay of it. Time Did lighting you out. You see the time in the, in the lower corner, 20 seconds. When this one hits the air and gets up in the wind and watch George Crawford. Just gets right up, times it perfectly and heads it down. Very difficult for a keeper to get down in the line like that. Brad Hodder couldn't even see it, let alone get to it. Great goal by George Crawford. Well, Craig Ginsburg, Crawford beat you to it. <laughs> With 19 <laughs> seconds officially as that one went in, George yeah, Crawford, good. the answer to the trivia question, a guy who rarely scores gets the first goal in franchise history and it could not have come almost at a later time, but it could not have come at a better time because this is a brand new game now, 15 minutes of sudden death overtime. And if no one scores in the 15 minutes, well then we'll go to the shootout and it is a very exciting. We'll be back with overtime after this on the Blast TV Network. 
Time Warner Cable is looking for enthusiastic customer service personnel to join our customer call center. Strong communication skills and a minimum of one year phone experience is required. Available shifts are noon to 11 p.m. Starting pay is commensurate with experience and ranges between $7.75 and $12.85 an hour. If interested, send or fax your resume to our offices and you could be on your way to an exciting career in entertainment communications. The ladies and I used to sit around and play cards, knit, and watch the soaps. We made quite a team. Then one day, Helen heard about strength training. She got a free fact sheet just by calling 1-800-222-2225. We found lifting weights builds muscles and bones. It improves our balance, too. So now when we get together, we exercise. It really gives us a lift. Give yourself a lift. Call for a free fact sheet. who'd rather tune an engine than eat. Who reads a tachometer like a love story. For whom the roar of fully blown horsepower is a lullaby. Have we got a machine for you? We call it the F-16 Fighting Falcon. It'll crank out a generous 50,000 horsepower, enough to push it from zero to 1350 in under a minute. And in the hands of the right mechanic, it'll blow the doors off anything. Aim high, Air Force. Neither team able to score in overtime. We go now to the shootout. Here's how it works. The ball is on the 35-yard line, and one by one, alternating teams, players will get five seconds to take the ball from the 35 and try to beat the goalkeeper one-on-one. -on -one. And Alan Alderson will be the first shooter for the blast. Jimmy McDonald setting out the veteran defender, and he will have five seconds from the time the flag drops to try to beat Brad Howder one-on-one. -on -one. As opposed to the penalty shot from the 12 yard line, this becomes a lot more advantageous to a goalkeeper. So the, the, the field player is at the disadvantage in a sense because the, the goalkeepers can now come on out, make a play, cut off the angles, and, and make it a lot more difficult for the field player. Plus, he only has five seconds to get it off his foot. So it becomes more of a pressure situation for the, for the attacking player in this setting. And you see Brad doing the mental preparation that he's going to be. Well, now, up for here. Alderson, uh, the thing about this one is Mark Schlenker will be going first for Rockford as Rockford will get the first chance at this. You see Schlenker there, number 17, and we'll see if Milovats is feeling any of the effects of the injury that he sustained in the late stages of regulation. You'll see Mile come out of the goal immediately. Schlenker's ready. When the flag drops, he'll have five seconds. Off the mark, just outside the box. Milovac comes out and he saves it. So now Alderson has a chance to give the blast a 1-0 lead. It's five rounds of shootout. If one team gets an advantage after, say, three, if the blast were to score in their first three shots and Rockford were to be denied, it would be over. It's best of five. Here's Alderson. Howder on his line. And this is something that a lot of maybe the foreign players will be at a disadvantage of because in Europe and stuff, they don't have these shootouts. This no. is a distinctly American invention to try to get a winner. We're going to have a winner here today. Here's Alan Alderson. He has five seconds. Howder comes out. Alderson waits, waits, chips it over his head, and just missed. Howder did get a hand on it. Brad came out. Obviously, the, the keeper's job is to try to cut off some kind of an angle and, and take away part of the goal. And... A quick reaction time there, just got a couple fingertips on it and, and just steered it wide. Looked like it was dropping in from our point of view. We couldn't really tell. Alderson was it. milking that five seconds too. We don't have a clock to show you, but he was taking it right down to the very limit. And now it'll be Alex Umansky. Milovac is back in there. 
Howder watching from the far side. The flag drops, and Umansky is off. And Milovac nice. makes the save again. You see the camera angle on that one there from the field point of view. It's a, a great look at that. Great save by Mele, guessing the right way and, and, and reacting with the quickness and the speed that he's shown throughout the day here. The shooters have two, op two options. They can hit the ball before the keeper even comes close to him, try to chip it, chip it over him or, or try to bend it around him or try to take the keeper on and then slide it into the empty net. So far, they've, they've, all the shooters, the three shooters, have opted to try to shoot the ball early, and each keeper so far has come up with the save. Now it's up to Mark Phillips. He's due for a goal today, huh? Howder off his line. Phillips, top of the box. And Howder got a foot on that one. And so we are still scoreless through two rounds. We'll keep doing this thing all day if need be. <laughs> it is after five shooters, though, it's sudden death. If one team scores and the other does not, then the game is over. Now it'll be Scott Lamphere for Rockford. Mark had a couple. Mark Phillips had a couple of good opportunities throughout the game. He had a good game today. He really did. He, he he was more of a presence in the midfield, and that's what they need. He's obviously disappointed in the result of his uh, not scoring there. Here's Lamphere. Third round of shootout. Neither team able to score thus far. Lamphere takes the shot, and Lamphere scores as he just deked Mele out. And so Rockford has a 1-0 lead in the shootout. See the space between the shooter and the goalkeeper in that situation. He had a lot more room and just slid it into the corner of the net. Very well placed, nice composure. Now it's up to Gusto to try to tie the shootout. Regulation time ended with a 1-1 score. Rockford leads in the shootout 1-0. Brad Howder signals that he's ready. Gusto is ready. And Gusto's off. Howder comes out up to the 18. And Gusto just misses. Skip that one just wide right. He tried to do almost identically what the Raptors just did, hitting the ball a little early. Fortunately, just missed it. See the keeper's advantage in situations like this. It's not an easy, it's not an easy goal. You think, oh, it's a breakaway, no sweat, should be a goal. These keepers are very well trained in the, in the angles that they play and, and trying to be as big as possible. And they're very quick to you know to boot. So it's a tough, it's a tough goal to score. This one important because if Josh Provan scores here, then the blast have to score to stay alive. And Provan misses. Mele may have gotten a piece of that. So now the blast's still alive, but they'll send Russell G out to try to equalize. This is the fourth round of shootout. And conversely, if G does not score here and the next Rockford shooter does score, it is also over. So a lot of pressure on the veteran from England, Russell G. Milovac trying to stay loose over on the far side. And here's Russell G off the line. Howder comes out. G shoots and Howder makes the save. So now very big for Mile Milovac. You see the way Brad comes out and he's got his arms out wide. He's just trying to mentally say to himself, let me be as big as I can here and, and, and cover as much of this goal as I can. Milovac in goal. Jason Akers now will take the shot for Rockford and Mele has to save this or it's over. Rockford leading 1-0 in shootout. The blast will not get to shoot if Akers makes this one because the game will be over. Akers out, big save upcoming. Shot just wide and now a chance to salvage a tie here is Ken Tometsko. This is to send it to sudden death shootout. Tometsko not much of a goal scorer. He'll have to be here or this game is over. Tometsko just acquired a couple of weeks ago, played last year with the Rochester Raging Rhinos of the A-League and the Atlanta Ruckus as well. 
Big kid from Cornell was all Ivy League. He'll be all everything today in the eyes of his teammates if he can get this one past Brad Howder. Howder's ready. Tometsko's ready. This is for the tie to keep the blast alive. Tometsko, Howder out, and Howder saves it. The game is over. Well, the blast take him to the limit. Ken Tometsko's shootout try saved by Brad Howder. The final score in shootout. The Rockford Raptors two, the Indiana Blast one. Back with the postgame show after this on the Blast TV network. Langeman's Deli and Bagels is a great place for a fast meal that isn't fast food. We have 16 types of bagels baked from scratch daily from family recipes. Get your day going with a bagel and your favorite gourmet coffee or drop in for a delicious deli sandwich for lunch. Langemans can even help with your party or corporate gathering with our box lunches, deli trays, party trays, and our party bagel hero with three convenient Indianapolis locations, Langemans Deli and Bagels. There'll be a new look and feel in the exhibit area at the 1997 Indiana Black Expo with better opportunities for consumers to see your exhibit and learn about your company, product, or services. Your booth will be seen by thousands from the Midwest and from Indianapolis, the Midwest's third most affluent African-American community. So reserve your Indiana Black Expo booth today. Call Marsha Bennett, 925-2702, 925-2702. The 1997 Indiana Black Expo, July 17th through 20th, the Indiana Convention Center and RCA Doe. There's a lot of great stuff your kids can watch on TV and some not so great stuff. So how do you teach them the difference? A new instructional video called Taking Charge of Your TV. It can help. There's nothing complicated here. Just simple, common sense steps your family can take together. To get a copy, contact your local cable operator or the Family and Community Critical Viewing Project. They'll teach you to help your kids be better viewers. You're tuned to the Indiana Blast TV Network. Back at Coon Stadium, the Blast fall to the Rockford Raptors 2-1 in shootout. Let's look at the goal that won it. The only goal of shootout as Scott Lamphere, second-year guy, formerly with MLS's Metro Stars, just kind of faked Eli out a little bit, Dan, and just put that one past him to the far post. Nice composure, just, just laid it in. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just a simple push pass at the back of the net, and that, that's enough to win the game. Well, that was the game-winning goal, but I don't think that was the goal of the game. The guy who is now with Chris Baker on the side got the goal of the game. The first goal in franchise history is George Crawford. Bake? We're with George Crawford, the MVP of the game. Scored the first goal in uh, Blast history. How's it feel, George? It was exciting. I'm... I'm I'm kind of sad that the outcome at the end of the game wasn't a little, you know, better. But, you know, the goal was exciting. I, I saw it coming all the way in the air, and I just felt it the whole way through. Yeah. What uh, What did Jimmy tell you at halftime that helped uh, help the boys pick up the pace uh, there in the second half? Well, I think what we were doing first half was dropping off of them a little too much and giving their midfield a little too much of the play. They would get the ball wide to their wide backs and then to their wide midfielders, and we were caught kind of in no man's land. So he told us to step up and step up the pressure earlier on the ball, which would cause them to turn the ball over further in their half, further in you know their defensive end. And I think it worked pretty well. How does it feel to play uh, outdoor professional ball in your hometown? Oh, it's great. It's, it's excellent. I mean, the atmosphere, I know there's a lot of cup games going on today, but uh, the atmosphere at the first game, the atmosphere here at the second game was excellent. All right, George, thanks a lot. Best of luck next, next week. Thanks. Ken, back to you. All right, Bake, thank you. All right, Bake, thank you. So the blast fall to 0 and 3, but some signs today, Dan, at least. Uh, they do get a good get first goal, so at least that monkey is off their back. They've still, the first victory is still to come, but maybe that'll come Friday night against Cincinnati. They, 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 they do show signs of, of things that are happening that are happening good. They're just not a, at a consistent level yet, and I know that Coach McDonald and Coach Sonich are going to be working on that over the next several days. All right, so for Dan Capps House, Chris Baker, and our producer director, Bernie Johnson. Once again, the final score from Coon Stadium, the Rockford Raptors 2, the Indiana Blast 1 in shootout. This has been a presentation of Time Warner Cable Sports in association with the Blast TV Network. And
and KT Soccer Broadcasting. So until next week, good night, everybody. prepare for the future's hottest jobs at community colleges.